we give praise and glory and honor amen for another day this this is the day that the lord hath made we ought to rejoice and be glad in it so god i, have, I ask now god that as we come into your presence with singing and, and, and as we come into your presence with a praise and a glory on our hands and our lips, we honor you and love you and adore you for this moment. Amen in Jesus' name. So I have a scripture that I want to come to you real quick. It's Psalms 146. Psalms 146. And it reads, Praise ye the Lord. Praise the Lord, O my soul. While I live, I will praise the Lord. I will sing praises unto my God while I have my being. Amen. We give God praise and glory. Amen. As we stand in the presence of our almighty King, we stand in the presence of the almighty God. We stand in his presence because he is God alone. There is none like him, none before him. There is none beneath him. And as we come into the presence of our King, as we come into the presence of our God, we're going to sing praises because we have our being. We're going to sing praises because we have a right mind. We're going to sing praises because we have a right spirit. We're going to sing praises praises as we lift our hands. We're going to sing praises because he's been good. We're going to sing praises because his mercy is doeth and everlasting. We're going to sing praises because he has kept Israel. We're going to sing praises because he's a healing God. We're going to sing praises because he's a provision God. We're going to sing praises because he's a promising God. We're going to sing praises because he's a protecting God. We're going to sing praises because he's a delivering God. We're going to sing praises because he's been good. Because his mercy endureth to all generations. So come, come on, let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we love you and adore you. We ask now, God, as we come into your presence with singing, we come into your presence with a praise. We ask now, God, that this praise and this worship, oh God, will hit the door of heaven. That you have no other choice but to respond to the praises of your people. And so God, as we come now, God, we lift up your name. We praise your name. We honor your name. We extol your name. It's all in your splendor and in your majesty. God, that we have this moment. God, to worship you in spirit and in, in truth. So God, I ask now, God, that you go before us. God, make easy success for our way. As we come into the, the moment of worship, God, we come against any distractions, anything that would deter us from coming into your presence. So now, God, we love you for this moment. We bless you, and we honor you now, God. As the Bible says, God, right now, God, we're going to sing praises into your name. We're going to sing praises into your mighty name. And so, God, as we lift up our voice at this moment, as we lift up our hands at this moment, as we lift up our eyes, as we look to the hills from which come of our help, our help comes from you. And, we go, and so, God, in this moment, we bless you. We honor you, and we love you. And we bless you now in the matchless name, the magnificent name, the marvelous name, the gracious name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. I dare everybody put your hands together and give God a praise. Come on, let's keep the praise going in the house. Come on, let's keep the praise going in the house. We just came to encourage you on today that God can do anything but fail. Come keep a praise going in this house come on you got to open up your mouth and saturate this place of praise hallelujah hallelujah like I said we just came to encourage you that God can do anything but fail anybody believe that only God can do the miraculous only God can heal only God can deliver God can set free I want you to join in with praise and worship as we came to encourage you on this day. God can do anything. God can do anything. God can do anything but fail. God can do anything. God can do anything. God can do anything but fail God can do anything God can do anything God can do anything but fail God can do anything 
God can do anything. God can do anything but fail. God can do anything. God can do anything. God can do anything but fail. God can do anything. God can do anything. God can do anything but fail. God can create. God can heal. He can deliver. Come on and put your hands together. God can heal. God Only God can do it. Only God can do it. Only God can do it. Whatever you need. Only God can do it. Whatever you need. Only God can do it. You need healing. Only God can do it. Need deliverance. Only God can do it. 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 You need healing. Only God can do it. You need healing. Only God can do it. 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 Do only God can do it. 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 He'll pick you up. He'll turn you around. He'll place your feet on higher ground. Only God can do it. Only God can do it. Only God can do it. God can do it. Only 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 God can do it. Whatever you need. Only God can do it. Whatever you need. Only God can do it. He'll bring you out. He'll bring you through. He'll bring you over. Only God can do it. Come on and put your hands together if you believe that only God can do it. Come on, come on. Come on, put your hands together wherever you are. Bless the name of the Lord. Yeah. Only God can do it. 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 Your finances. Only God can do it. Only God can do it. Only God can do it. Whatever you need. Only God can do it. Whatever you need. Only God can do it. 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 You need the Holy, the Holy Ghost. Holy God can do it. 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 Whatever you need. Holy God can do it. Holy God can do it. Holy God can do it. You need a healing. Holy God can do it. 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 Need deliverance. Holy God can do it. Need deliverance. Holy God can do it. Need deliverance. Holy God can do it. Holy God can do it. Holy God can do it. He saved your mind. Holy God can do it. 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 Keep it prep your body. Holy God can do it. Holy God 
can do it. Holy God can do it. Holy God can do it. Holy God can do it. Holy God can do it. Holy God can do it. God bless your name, God. Come on, put your hands together. Somebody need he, somebody needs to hear that it's great. If he did it before, he can do it again. My God, if he did it before, he can do it again. I'm gonna say that one more time. If he did it before, he can do it again. If he did it, if he did it last year, if he did it two years ago, if he did it three years ago. Guess what? He can do it right now. Because I serve a right now, God. I serve a right now, God. I serve a right now, God. I need somebody to encourage somebody else. Oh my God, that he is a right now, God. I can't get that out of my spirit. He is a right now, God. My God, he's a right now God. He's a right now God. Yeah, yeah. Oh my God, I didn't say it one more time. He's a right now God. Let me go to scripture. Now faith 
Now faith. Now faith. Now faith. Not today, but now faith. Not last year's faith, but now faith. Is the substance of things held for and the evidence of things not seen. I serve a right now God. I serve a right now God. I serve a right now God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. My God, my God, I serve a right now God. Only God can do it. Only God can do it. Only God can do it. Love it. Come on. Come on. Lift up. Come on. Look. Come on. Lift. 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 Let's lift him up. Let's lift him up. Lift him up. Lift him up. Father, right now in the name of Jesus, we come before you to praise you and to honor you and to love you and to thank you, God, for every provision that you've made for us because only you can do everything, God, that we have requested and put before your throne. And so, God, in the name of Jesus, we love you and adore you for this moment of prayer. We thank you, God, as, as we are rising once again out of our slumber and sleep, God, to come and to enjoy into your presence. I ask now, God, that you go before our prayer, go before our petitions, go before us now, God, in the manner of what we must do this week. God, this has been a trying week for some. God, it's been a challenging week for others. But we know, God, that we have the victory through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So, God, I ask now, God, that we was not, God, operate out of victory, but we will operate from victory. Oh, God, in the name of Jesus. And so, God, as we pray, God, we pray, we're praying, God, for our state. God, we're praying for our city. We're praying for our country. God, we're praying for every person on the front lines. God, we're praying for every health care worker, every doctor, every nurse, every nurse's aide, every janitor, every, every orderly, God, for every person, God, that is in the health care industry. We lift them up to you now in the name of Jesus. God, we're praying for those that are IC, IC, ICU. God, we're praying for those in hospice. We're praying for those that are on life support. We're praying for those induced in comas, God. We pray, God, in the name of Jesus, God, that you will be in every room, in every area, in the emergency room, in the urgent care room, God. Be with them in their minds and their hearts now, God. We ask now, God, for every loved one, oh God, that has transitioned on, God, to another dimension. We pray now in the name of Jesus for every family that has been left behind. We're praying for that husband. We're praying for that wife. We're praying for that mother, that daughter, that son. We're praying for that auntie, uncle, God. We're praying for those that have been left behind on this other side of heaven. We pray, God, that you give them a peace that will pass all understanding that will guard their heart and mind. God, heal their sorrows because there is no sorrow that heaven can't heal. And we ask now, God, that you heal them in the mighty name of Jesus. Be with our leaders now, God. Be with every mayor. Be with every governor. Be with the president of this United States. We pray now, God, for the task force that has been put together. We pray, God, that they will come together in wisdom and in knowledge, God, to be able to maneuver us through this situation. But we know, God, that you are the, are the, are the orchestrator of the end of every expected situation. So now, God, we lift up you, God. We place you in the middle of this mess. We place you in the middle, middle of this virus. We place you in the middle of every concern and every fear that your people are feeling. So now, God, as we love you for this moment, God, I ask now, God, that you be with our hearts, God. Oh, God, that we shall not be in fear, but we shall stand in faith. I ask now, God, as the word is illuminating in our spirit. God, you have not given us the spirit of fear, but you have given us love, power, and a sound mind. So, God, let us operate in wisdom. Let us operate in love. And let us operate in a sound mind. So, God, we love you for this moment of prayer. Forgive us of any sin that we've committed. Oh, God, that anything that we've done now that, that was not pleasing to you, that was not pleasing to your sight, that was contrary to the, to the word of God according to how we shall live. And I ask now that we plead the blood over every sin, every commission, omission, every intentional, every unintentional sin that we have placed in your kingdom. And we plead the blood over it in the name of Jesus. We thank you, God, for sending your son.
son because without him God we would not have life and more abundant life we thank you for life we thank you for provision we thank you for love we thank you for the continents of who you are and so God as we worship you and love you as we go into this worship experience we thank you we love you and we adore you in the matchless name of Jesus Christ our Savior everybody say amen Amen. Beloved, we love you. We love you. We adore you. We thank you for every last one of you joining in on our live, on our virtual worship Sunday. Amen. Amen. This is a week, God, that has been trying for some and challenging for others, but we know that God has given us the victory through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. As we are about to go into a moment of giving, I want to just express to all of you, thank you so much for your patience. Thank you for your giving. Thank you for your conscious mind that I don't have to prick you or prime you or to punch you or to push you. Amen. <laughs> Amen to giving that you all have been giving diligently and thank you so much for your giving so as we are going to give go into the moment of our giving i want all of you to go into our website wwwlrc indyorg slash give go into our website we want you to give we want you to bless god with your tithe we want god we want you to bless god with your offering whatever you have whatever you're able to give based on what god has given unto you the bible says press down shaken together that men will give unto your bosom amen i want you to give according to how men has given unto you that means a paycheck a salary however men have given unto you i want you to bless god according to how he has blessed you the bible says bring ye all the tithe into the storehouse that there may be meat resource substance in my house and he said prove me now here with said the lord of hosts sometimes we got to prove god and sometimes we want god god wants to prove himself to you and sometimes we have to allow god to show him or to for him to show us exactly who he is because he is the ultimate provider amen he is the ultimate provider. He says, prove me now herewith, said the Lord of hosts, if I would not open you the windows of heaven, check this out, and pull you out a blessing, you won't have room enough to receive. So here's the thing. I want you to understand that when you give unto God, you bring your tithe, you bring your offering, you bring the substance that God has given you, God is going to give you a continued flow of resource. That means he will open up the windows of heaven. That means it's not just one. That that means windows. That means all multiple opportunities that he's going to sow into your life. Amen. I don't know about y'all, but I just don't want God to do one avenue of blessing. I want God to bless me abundantly. Amen. 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 Somebody. I want God to bless us abundantly. So if you have your tithe, your offering, some of you have already given. Thank God for, for all of you that already already have given. But those that want to give, those that are watching at this moment, we are is going to be up on our website, www.lrcindy.org slash give. So give, give unto God according to how he has blessed you. Amen. Let me pray over the tithe, over the offering. Father, in the name of Jesus, we bless you for every seed. We bless you for every offering. We bless you for every tithe. And as we give unto you, God, we bless Bless you and honor you, God, for the opportunity, God, to give unto the kingdom. So God bless every seed and sower, God, right now in the name of Jesus. We love you and adore you for the opportunity to give. So as you're giving, I want you to raise it up in your if you, your wallet, your credit card, whatever you your money, whatever you have. I want you to raise it and say, Father, this is my tithe. This is my seed that I give unto you. I pray, God, that we will meet the need of your kingdom. And as we meet the need of your kingdom meet the need of our house in jesus name amen amen come on let's give amen and the next voice you will hear will be the abundance of our worship team god bless you amen 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 it's the most important time of the service it's the word of god Immediately, I ask you to open your hearts and your minds and hear the word of the Lord.
down on a knee from the top of my head to my feet. Pour your oil on me, let it fall down on me. I want your glory, I want your glory, I want your glory, I want your glory. Fall down on me from the top of my head to my feet. Pour your oil on me, let it fall down on me. I want your glory, I want your glory, I want your glory, I want your glory. you 
we need you. We need you. We need you. We need you to follow me, God. We need you. We need you. We need you to follow me. Fall on me, we need you, we need you, we need you, we need you, we need the call of me, God, we need you, 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 pour your oil. Fall down on me from the top of my head to my feet. Pour your oil on me, let it fall down on me. I want your glory, want your glory. I want your glory, I want your glory. I want your glory. I want your glory, I want your glory, I want your glory, I want your glory, I want your glory. Oh, praise the Lord, somebody. Somebody give God a hand clap of praise in this place. Where you are sitting at home, where you are looking across the internet, I dare you to give God a hand clap of praise. Because right now, we need God. I've never known a minute, hour, day, or second that I didn't need Him. So we needed to pour His oil on us. Hallelujah. Glory. Glory. Thank you, Father. To God be all the glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. We are ready for the word, amen. I want to say hello to my nephew, Demoris and Demarion that are watching me. I told them I'd shout them out. And to my sister Loretta, God bless you. Listen, we are going into the chapter of Luke 17. Luke 17th chapter. I'm going to be reading 11 through 19. Luke the 17th chapter, verses 11 through 19. When you're there, let me know by saying amen. And it came to pass as he went to Jerusalem that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered into a certain village, there met him 10 men that were lepers, which stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said unto them, go, shew yourselves unto the priest. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, 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 turned back and with a loud voice glorified God and fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. And Jesus answering said, were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? There are not found that return to give glory to God, save this stranger. And he said unto him, Arise, go thy way, thy faith hath made thee whole. Let us pray. Father, we thank you right now for another opportunity to stand, O God, in your presence. Stand in this place, O God, and deliver this word. Father God, it is my prayer, my sincere desire that you completely move me out of the way. Father God, get in me. Be glorified through me. Be glorified through your word. Father God, I pray, God, that a life will be changed. I pray that a soul will be saved. I pray, Father God, that someone that is malnourished right now, God, will get the meat of this word, oh God, and it will bring life to their bones. Father God, let us walk away, Father God, forever changed after having heard your word. And most of all, Father God, we pray, God, that our lives will be the better for having heard this word. So, Father, get down deep into the bowels of me and in this word, oh God, and deliver it as you see fit. 
In Jesus' name we pray, amen, and thank God. Mycobacterium, leprae. It's the infectious bacterial agent of leprosy. Leprosy is discussed quite often in the Bible. And the term leprosy, including leper, lepers, and leprous, occurs 68 times in the Bible, 55 in the Old Testament, and 13 in the New Testament. Now, leprosy is spread, I need you to hear me, leprosy is spread by multiple skin contact feet, as well as by droplets from the upper respiratory tract, such as nasal secretions that are transmitted from person to person. And Leviticus 13 and 14 is a tedious yet major section that, if you want to know more about it, deals with leprosy and its cleanliness laws. And Leviticus covers the identification of this disease when to quarantine and the remediation of the person, the person's clothing, as well as the person's dwelling place. Now, back in the Bible days, when it was determined that a man had leprosy, they would banish him from his society. He was no longer allowed to have communion with other people. He had to leave his family and he had to leave his friends. It was unlawful for a leper to approach or come within 50 feet of a clean person. Mm, if it was a windy day, that rule changed, Pastor, to 200 feet. He could not even touch his family. He could only see them from a distance, Deacon Tardy. The leper had to tear his garments so people would recognize and even know that he indeed was a leper. He was to dress as a mourner going to a funeral, his own funeral. Now over his upper lip, they say he had to wear a cloth so that he wouldn't spread the contamination. Kind of sounds familiar to us today. And every time he saw people coming, the leper was supposed to cry, unclean, I'm unclean. And the leper's cries would warn people that a leper was nearby in the vicinity. And people would pick up stones and begin to throw them at the leper so that he would not come near them. And if a leper even stuck his head in your house, in a window, through a door, your home was now considered unclean. And the leper was now illegal. Leprosy was paralyzing. Now, I'm gonna give you the definition of paralysis, the loss of the ability to move, and sometimes to feel anything. In part, or most of the body typically as a result of illness, poison, or injury. When you're in paralysis, you're shut down. You're immobile, and you're rendered powerless. So I would say that our nation and our churches and the body of Christ is suffering paralysis right now. Now, I keep hearing people say, I can't wait to get back to normal. Well, newsflash, people of God, normality is what got us here. Uh-huh. God is calling us back to holiness. But then I had to think, were we ever in holiness? Because what we deem normal is our way and not the way of God. So God is calling us to holiness, which will command from us a complete change of direction and a change of action. To move forward, we have to put it in reverse. So I need you to look at somebody, whoever's next to you, and tell them, put it in reverse. Now that's what reverse means. It means to have a complete change of direction and a change of action. So we have to have a change of direction and a change of action before we can do what? Go forward. Now, leprosy is a powerful symbol reminding us of sin spread and its horrible consequences. Like leprosy, sin will start small. But oh, can that thing spread, leading to other sins. 
of the freaky ways, causing great damage to our relationship, not just with God, but everybody else. And God's people are suffering from spiritual leprosy. And we've ignored all of the signs and the symptoms. We've lived as if church is useful, but unnecessary. Holiness has become a dirty and offensive word amongst the body of Christ. And it will not be until we perceive one true condition that the great physician will be valued. And we have to perceive that our true condition is we thought what we were doing was normal. And that, my friends, was sin. So now we are here. We've been sinful, we've been flesh-driven, haughty, proud. Philip, we're unforgiving, disrespectful, lackadaisical in how we handle God, unrepentant and rebellious for far too long. And I need you to know that rebellion is a spirit of the Antichrist. And if you don't believe me, my receipt is 1 John 4 and 3. Now, I need you to know that you're listening to me. Now, you know I'm going to take you somewhere, but I just need you to hear this because I need to prick a conscious spirit today. And not only is rebellion the spirit of the Antichrist, but listen, we're brilliant at fighting the sins that have an impact on how other people see us and make peace with the ones nobody sees. So whatever I can do that I can get away with, I don't care about that. But what I know that you can see, I'm gonna fight to make sure that you don't see how my sin has impacted me. But beloved, there's a difference between a fleshly effort and a godly effort. Sanctification can only happen where God's word is being manifested and obeyed. And even now, even now, Today, April 27, 2020, six and seven weeks into a shutdown. Right now, people still have yet to humble themselves. Now listen, you can't see the face of God with a haughty spirit. Why are there so few of us willing to even stoop that low? And how sad this is, but true. Learn to bend. Learn to bow. Learn to kneel. I dare you to learn to stoop because only then will you be able to see God face to face. And that way you can see yourself. So now here we go. We're going into the text because our text finds 10 lepers who had been as low as you can get without physical death. Or so we thought. They had died spiritually long ago, leaving a stench, an open wound far worse than the disease of leprosy had. We have nine Jews and a Samaritan. Their uniting characteristic is the foul disease that had cast them away from society. They had lived together, suffered together, cried together, and ate together. I'm sure that they talked about their disease together. And these 10 men had the worst disease of their day. The physical ramifications alone were horrible. They were horrendous. Leprosy had tacked the body, leaving sores, missing fingers, missing toes, damaged limbs, nerve damage, not to imagine the mental as well as emotional pain. And it's obvious from the text that they'd heard who Jesus was. Because the text says Jesus is of Nazareth is traveling along the border of Samaria and Galilee. And as he enters the village, upon his entrance, there are 10 men standing, crying out for mercy. Now, how did they know who he was? Had they known him before their isolation, but paid him no mind? Had they heard rumors floating around and across this barren countryside that he was the guy that had healed the leper because he had just healed a leper before he got there? I wondered when I thought about it, where are we at today? How many of us are crying out for God now? We knew about him. We heard about him. We were privy to his miracles, but we still ignored him. So now here we are, isolated, put away. 
how many of us are crying, a heartfelt cry. I don't want to cry because I want to get out of this, God, but I'm crying because I'm sorry and I'm repentant. And when this is over, Father God, I want to be where you tell me I need to be. So let's, let's kind of break this down because I'm sure that they'd heard about him healing another leper. And so somebody had to think, surely if he'd done it before, he could do it again. So unwilling to forfeit the opportunity that the Savior was passing by, the word says they begin to yell in desperation. Now, let me tell you something. They were yelling in desperation because I need you to understand that when I looked this up, they, I went and I studied, and they said for years they had been in isolation. Yes. Leprosy didn't kill you, but there was no cure. So for years, they're in isolation, and for years, their limbs are falling off, nerve damage, their skin has turned white, the hair on their bodies is white, everything is falling apart for them. And so can you imagine the desperation when they knew that he was coming by? And so I understood them yelling when they saw him come by because this was their last chance. So I want you to know, all of you spiritual lepers out there who are so quick to say, it does not take all that, I need to know how you feel right now. Do you? think that it takes something like that right now how about right now somebody needs to be crying out to God how about right now somebody needs to be on their face how about right now somebody needs to humble themselves how about right now somebody needs to be asking for mercy I dare you right now if you've been one of those quiet saints if you suffer with spiritual leprosy I dare you to lift your voice and cry out father have mercy on me haven't we lost enough lives? Haven't we lost enough jobs? Haven't we lost enough hope? Haven't we lost enough joy? Haven't we lost enough peace? Haven't we lost enough time? Why are we not crying out? This could be our last time. But I found out, Deacon Bland, we wouldn't be so desperate if we were desperate. My goodness. Had we been desperate for God back then, we wouldn't be so desperate for God right now. Because, see, before things started acting up and being a mess, we should have been desperate back then. Because just my sin alone should have kept me desperate. But then I had to wait till something comes over me. And now we got to wait until we hear about a virus. And people losing their jobs. And people can't pay their mortgages. And people can't pay their rent. And now we want to be desperate. But I'm so glad to tell you that when I was lost in my sin, God showed me who I was. And even though it wasn't pretty, I said, Father, here I am. I need you to clean me up. Get down and purge me. I need to be made over. And so I was desperate way back then. And so I'm not desperate now. Other than I'm desperate for this country to humble themselves. Kneel down before God and pray for a healing. Not just a physical healing, but we need to pray for a spiritual healing. And once the spiritual healing begins to take place, we'll be in agreement and all will be well. So listen, Jesus now hears them say, go show yourselves to the priest. Hmm. Can you believe that? Have mercy on us, Jesus. They're screaming, they're desperate. And he says, go show yourselves to the priest. He didn't touch them. Now, he had touched the other leper, but he hadn't touched them. He said, go show yourself to the priest. So the Bible says, as they went, they were healed. Not before. After, but during, during, Mike, during. That was, that's when the faith walk was perfected. Because Philip, they didn't ask any questions. They just went. So as they were walking, 
they went. Now they still had leprosy. They still had leprosy, but they still went. So I could imagine they took the first step, nothing happened. The second step, leprosy still there. They take a third step, but they still walk. Man, ain't nothing. I still feel the same, but they didn't stop walking. So then they get to the fourth step. All of a sudden, something wonderful began to happen. Something unbelievable began to take place. Something miraculous, the impossible. Oh, it began to happen because with the fourth step, I can believe that instantly, miraculously, all 10 at the same time, it didn't, they didn't fall off one by one. But see, God has the power to heal everybody at the same time. It'll take him all day. It'll take him all night. God can do whatever he wants to do. However, he wants to do it. So now here we have all 10 of them and they're walking and they were indeed cleansed, but they were not healed. Ah, there's a difference, saints. They were cleansed, but they weren't healed. Now I'm going to tell you why. Because leprosy was a spiritual disease that exploited your sin. You understand? They said leprosy was a sin disease because if you had sinned, that was your punishment. And so they were cleansed. That's what they said. They were cleansed, but they were not healed. So it was the priest that pronounced you unclean in the first place. So how fascinating it was to me that the same person that called me unclean, now I got to go back to that same person for them to tell me that I'm clean. Oh my goodness. But they were more than happy to run back to the same person that had put them where they were because they were so ready to get back to society and to their families that nothing else mattered. Now these are the same ones that shunned me, but I'm still going to go back. And see, what I love about Jesus is that Jesus knew that the only way that they could be deemed clean is that they had to go back to the priest. Now Jesus was not trying to mess things up, but this was important to the story because he was about to go to be crucified. And so everything had a time and everything had a purpose. But what I like most about it is that even though he sent them back to the priest, he didn't ask for anything else. Nothing else. He just told them to go. He didn't say, come back. Show me nothing. Tell me nothing. Testify to it. Just go. So let me tell you the facts I'm going to give you symptoms of natural lep leprosy, but I'm going to translate it for you to spiritual leprosy. Because until we get healed from spiritual leprosy, nothing's going to change. So natural leprosy causes reduced sensation of touch. Spiritual leprosy means the word of God is no longer relevant to you. Natural leprosy causes a pins and a needles feeling. Spiritual leprosy says you've been pressed up against the world far too long. That's why you feel that sensation. I'll tell you, natural leprosy is numbness. Spiritual leprosy tells me you don't have the Holy Ghost. And then the natural leprosy is weakness in your hands and in your feet. But the spiritual leprosy tells me that you can't worship and you can't praise because of what's going on in your feet. Now listen, there is pain in the joints when you have natural leprosy. And so that relates to me as spiritual leprosy as uh, connecting poorly uh, in the body of Christ. Uh, now there's a disfiguring skin sore uh, that pops up on your body when you have natural leprosy. Uh, but spiritual leprosy lets me know uh, that your skin has made you and your sin uh, has made you unrecognizable. Uh, then there's the nerve damage that we get uh, when we have the spiritual leprosy. Uh, and when you get nerve damage, uh, that means there's no feeling of anything. Uh, and so that lets me know, saints, uh, that if you 
you a spiritual leper that you avoid of all pain there's no pain mechanism and because you have no pain mechanism it disables you from toxic behavior and when you'll be disabled from toxic behavior you repeat the same dangerous cycles over and over again and then one of the biggest things about natural leprosy is that it causes severe weight loss and listen I want you to know that if you have spiritual leprosy just because you're still trying to survive on the milk but I come to tell you today that the only way you're going to gain weight and get healed from spiritual leprosy is that you gotta have the meat of the word of God because drinking the milk has left you malnourished drinking the milk says I'll go to church when I'm in town drinking the milk says I'll pray in the crisis drinking the milk says I'll lay hands when I'm really sick drinking the milk says I'm not gonna answer my phone I'm sick of them want me to pray spiritual milk says I'm too weak to get up and do what God has told me to do spiritual milk says I know I should serve in the household of faith but I got too much that I want to do and I dare somebody today to get on the word of God and gain a little weight get on the word of God and build your strength get on the word of God and watch your muscles begin to show somebody say put it in reverse now reduce vision the last one you start losing vision when you have leprosy my goodness I'm going to tell you why when you have leprosy the nerve damage starts with your eyes first there is a nerve, and I know this because I did it for years. There's a nerve in our eye that causes our eyes to blink, to keep them protected and moistened. When I used to put contact lenses in people's eyes, there was a place in their lid I would hold to hit that nerve and their eye wouldn't blink. But that nerve, with left alone, is what causes us to blink thousands of times a day. But without the nerve and it's damaged, your eye will not blink. And when your eye won't blink, everything gets in your vision. Everything gets on your eye. And so it causes poor vision. And so I need you to know that if you have reduced vision from nerve damage, that's spiritual leprosy. And if you don't believe me, I have a receipt. It's Matthew 6 and 23. It says, if your eyes are bad, your whole body is in darkness. Mm, if your eye is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. So the lepers knew they were cleansed when a hand reappeared and began to tingle with life. A crutch that one of them was walking on fell down on top of a filthy rag that had fallen off of their now cleansed body. The leg no longer had a limp because of the nerve damage. Open sores were now closed. Clammy skin was now complete. Those white hairs on their arms had now begun to turn back to their original color. So I imagine one looked at the other and the others looked at each other. And then the screaming started. The smiles started. The oh my goodness started. The I can't believe this is happening started. The I've been in this place for years and all I had to do was walk and follow what he said and look at me I heard him say I'm going back to my family 
I heard somebody say, I don't know how old my kids are at this point, but I still get to go back to them. Kyla, I heard somebody say, now I'm going back to work because they're not going to shun me anymore. I heard another one of them say, hurry up and let's go take ourselves back to the priest because the quicker we get there, the quicker we can get back to our normal life. But lepers, I need to tell you uh, that there's nothing normal uh, about this anymore uh, because you was caught up. Uh, you had a disease uh, that shunned you from everybody. Uh, you had a disease uh, that made your fingers fall off. Uh, you had a disease uh, that made your feet fall off. Uh, you couldn't see well. You couldn't breathe well. Uh, and now you're cleansed. Uh, and all you want to do uh, is go back to normal. Uh, I'm going to need you to reverse that thing huh? because normal huh, is no longer an option. Huh? But they went ahead huh? and they went on anyway. Huh? They went anyway, anyway, anyway. But hold on, hold on. The Samaritan, the foreigner, began to dance. The nightmare was finally over. He joined in with them. Oh, my God. Look at us. But not everybody went back to normal. When the one leper saw that not only was his body cleansed, but that his mind had received a healing, that's when he put it in reverse. Because when they were shouting and screaming and talking amongst themselves. And they said, let's hurry up and get back to the priest. Let's get to the priest so we can get home. Something in him stopped and something in him. And I know that it was the Holy Ghost and put a reserve down in him. And as everybody began to run and as everybody began to go, something in him told him, hold on. I need you to go back and tell the Lord, thank you. And when he began to step back and put that thing in reverse, he said, I'm not just cleansed, but I've never felt anything like this before. And because I've never felt like this before, this has to be a healing in my mind. Because earlier today, I just wanted to be made whole. And now here I am. Not only am I cleansed, but now I'm healed. And because of my mind being healed first, I've got to go back. I've got to put it in reverse. I can't go back to my life of sin. I can't go back to the way it used to be. I can't go back. I can't go back. I won't go back. So, the Bible's very clear. And letting us know that he was a Samaritan. That meant he was a double outcast. Because the Jews hated the Samaritans. And isn't it funny that the Jews looked down on the Samaritans? They were nothing. They had no place. So he's a double outcast. He's got leprosy. And he's a Samaritan. And I found it odd that he's the one that went back until I continued to pray about and study this word because it was the foreigner in the midst of this celebration that knew he had to go back, not the Jews, but the foreigner. He reversed his steps. He put the priest on hold. He put the family on hold. And he came back to the very cause of his celebration. So when he got back to Jesus, it said he fell face down and worship. He fell face down and he worshiped. Then, not only did he fall face down and worship, but the Bible says that he praised God loudly. He was thankful loudly. He was public about it loudly. He wasn't shy at all. Why was he so loud? Because this guy has been forced to yell unclean 
for as long as he'd had leprosy. And he wasn't about to be timid now with his healing. And listen, I want you to know that coming back is not popular. Thank you, obviously, is no longer popular today. But as he thought about that thing, he could not sit there and be quiet. As he thought about that thing, I can imagine that with each step, he thought about everything that he had been through. He thought about everything that he had done. He thought about everything that the disease had taken away from him. He thought about every disobedience. He thought about every heartache. He thought about every pain. He thought about about every trial he thought about every sleepless at night he thought about every lonely day and a face down worship and a boisterous praise was the least that this man could do the nine refused to stoop that low but the foreigner he could and he did but why let us know that he's a foreigner you see a foreigner is someone who is born in belonging to or characteristic of some place or country other than the one that's under consideration and i know america we're under consideration by the disease but i'm a foreigner because i'm under consideration by the blood i'm heirs that join heirs of the promise i'm a foreigner i'm not like everybody else believers you're not like everybody else i dare you right now to put it in the reverse I just somebody to say hallelujah. The Bible says, the Bible says, I've given them my word, and the world hated them. For they are not of the world anymore. Then I am of this world. We are still in the world, saints of God, but we are no longer of this world. Christians are not of this world. We've been adopted as heirs of heaven by God himself. And that is our world. That is our citizenship that makes us foreigners. So everyone else may keep going and never come back. Everyone else may keep running to the same people that called you unclean. Everyone else may go back to doing what they've always done. Ah, not nah, nah, Moshe. Everyone else may go back and not stop to tell God thank you. But as his people, we have to throw that thing back in reverse. And the reason we have to throw it back in reverse is because for far too long, we've been living off blessings and miracles, healing and provision, mercy grace and forgiveness. We've been living off redemption for years without ever going back and telling God thank you. But today, beloved, we have to put that thing all the way in reverse. I need somebody today to go back and tell God thank you. I dare somebody today to put that in reverse. You see, God is faithful and God is just. And because of give you the leper through it in reverse i heard the leper say right now i gotta back that thing up right now i gotta do it different right now i gotta say thank you so listen i want you to know whoever's listening i need you to hear me as i say i reverse my will to his i reverse Pride to prayer. I reverse my ingratitude and tell him thank you. I reverse my attitude to humility. I reverse my no and say yes. I reverse my flesh to a spirit. I 
I reverse my wine to worship. I reverse my pet to a praise. I reverse my fear to faith. I revert my doubt to trust. I can't keep walking this way. I'm coming back. I'm coming back. I'm coming back. I got to go back and tell the Lord, thank you. I reverse it. you're coming back when this is over how you're coming back I need you to throw it in reverse watch healing take place I need you to throw it in reverse and watch doors begin open I need you to throw it in reverse and watch the decline of cases happen I need you to throw it in reverse and watch God do a new thing I need you to throw it in reverse and back that thing up. I need you to back up and quit being so ready to get back to normal because we can't ever be normal again. I already told you that we are foreigners and as foreigners, nothing is normal. When you're in a land that you can't speak the language and I'm sorry America, but I can't speak that selfish language. I can't be a, a narcissist but I've got to speak a thank you to my God I've got to speak with a heavenly language I've got to say I've got to say I've got to say God I thank you I'm looking back over my life how can I not go back Throw it in reverse. Go back. Look back. Go back and repent. Go back and worship. Go back and pray. Go back and lift your hand. Go back. Go back. I beg you. Go back. I plead with you. Go back. Go back. I beg you. Go back. I beg you. Hear me today. I beg you to go back. We're in a place that we've never been before. People are dying all around us. We come to church with a mask, with gloves the grocery. People are scared of each other. And I remember pastors pleading with their people to go to church, come to church, try to engage you back into the house of God. And the one thing, the one thing that would bring us together in agreement on our faith, we don't even have that. God said, I'm tired. I'm tired of them not coming back. He said, they don't reverence me. They don't honor me. They don't tell me thank you. I'm begging you to go back. We've been desperately 
desperately praying for a vaccine for physical healing. But how many of you have gone back and prayed for spiritual healing? We got to pray for the spiritual and the physical healing as well together. Because heaven will only hear if we're humble. You know, Second Chronicles says that. If my people call by my name, would humble themselves and pray and seek my face, then I will hear from heaven. So he's already there waiting to hear. But we have to back it up. I don't want you believers, men and women of God, I don't want you to say, I'm waiting to get back to normal anymore. I want you to say, I'm waiting to get back to the things of God that I neglected in the first place. I'm waiting to get back to the house of God and do this thing right. The pastors don't want you there for your money. They want you there because they want you to be saved. So in seasons like this, there is no doubt of where you will go, who you belong to, but that you won't live in fear, but you will live by faith. Please go back. Take it in reverse. We say move forward all the time. All the time we should be moving forward. But listen, sometimes you got to reverse something to get it where you need it to go. How many have had a car that got stalled and Deacon Blaine, you had to reverse it? To push it out the way to get it where you needed it to go to get fixed. Sometimes we have to reverse. And the Samaritan had to go back. I dare you today. I implore you today. Go back. I implore you today if you are watching this and you are not saved. As our pastor comes to offer an invitation to get you saved. I dare you to come back in reverse he's so worthy even in the dying around us the sickness around us the uncertainty around us the lack the poverty loss of jobs everything going on around us he's still worthy of a thank you put it in reverse god bless you God. Amen. We bless God for the word. Amen. What I got out of that, she said, go back to the calls. My God, go back to the calls. The one that healed you, the one that restored you, the one that gave you the healing. Go back to go. Let's sing right here. I won't go back. I won't go back. I can't go back. Can't go back. This is my plea to you, to my brother and the sister. Way you can't go back to the way it used to be. We got to find a new way. And Jesus is that new way. Come on, I can't. I won't go back. I won't go back. Can't go back to the way it used to be before your presence came and changed. You're here today. You're watching this. You want to be saved right here. We offer Jesus the same Jesus that was offered to the tent. And the one that came back, we offer that same Jesus to you. If you want to be saved, you want to be healed, you want to be whole, come on. Raise your hands at this moment. Yield yourself to the will of God. This is your moment of confession. This is your moment. We're going to continue to sing that song, but this is a moment that I just want you, those that are not saved, those that are looking for a church home, those that are looking for a place that they will find themselves in the, a moment of activity in the kingdom. If that's you, you want to be a part of Life Restoration Church, amen, we are going to extend this moment of invitation to you. 
And when we come back into the normalcy, we'll come back into a great awareness of what we're going to be. We're not going to come back to the normal. We're, come, we're going to come back to a greater normal in Jesus' name. And if you're here and you're watching at this moment and you want to be saved, you want to be sanctified, you want to be whole again, just like the leper that came back, he reversed it. Amen. He came back to the cause. I want you to acknowledge at this moment that I'm a sinner, a wretch undone. It's only through my confession. It's only through my belief in Jesus Christ that I can be saved, that I can be renewed, that I can be healed, and that I can be whole again. So if that's you, as they're going to sing this last one more time, I ask right now that you offer yourself unto the body of Christ. Come on, let's sing it one more time, and we're going to take this thing out. I won't go, I won't go back. I won't go back, can't go back to the way it used to be before your presence came and changed me. have done what God has called us to do for this time, this hour, and this moment. Thank you so much for joining in with us in this moment of worship. We thank you for the word. We thank you, God, for, for all the things that God is doing and what he is going to do. I want you to believe, God, on this week. Whatever provision that you're needing, whatever situation that you're facing, whatever challenge that may become upon you, we know that God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all we ask or think. So trust God in the process trust God in this moment trust God in this season we are believing God for healing upon the people we are believing God for restoration because this is a moment of restoration and we're believing God for it we thank God for the word amen go back and reverse it amen go back and reverse it amen go back to the cause go back to the one that healed you that saved you that made you whole again and so take this word upon this week we ask now God in the name of Jesus as we're gonna we're gonna pray we ask God that what God would be that God that he would be that provider that he would be that provision that he would be that strong tower join us on this Wednesday for another word amen on Wednesday Bible study for our virtual Bible study at seven o'clock join us right here at our life restoration amen on our website join us with our YouTube page as well as our Facebook amen go to all of our social media outlets to be able to join in with the word for us and we ask now God that as we're going forth that God would be that God. God would be that, that provider. God would be that sustainer among, our, among the people. So thank you for once again. And as we pray out, Father, in the name of Jesus, we love you and adore you. We thank you, God, for every provision, every word that has come upon to the life of your, of your people. God, we want to be just like that leper, that one that returned back to the cause. Because you were the cause of our healing. You were the cause of our deliverance. You were the cause of our restoration. So God, let us not go back to the way things used to be. We want to go into a greater dimension of who you are. We want to go into a greater revelation of who you are. So I ask now, God, that this word shall go forth. Let it go in the highways and the byways. Let it go national as well as international. We pray, God, that somebody will be inspired by this word. So we thank you. We honor you. We love you. And we bless you in the matchless name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. We ask right now in Jesus' name. And all of God's people say, Amen. God bless you. We'll see you again. Uh, the next worship experience. God bless you.